Hello, folks. Uh, now we're going to start getting into brake drum systems. Uh, so uh, the brake drum system is, like I said, it was more early on, and then uh, we've kind of migrated to the disc brake system. I'm not saying that you can't have a rear drum brake system with a front brake, uh, front disc system. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into this, and let's talk about it. All right, like always, we'll get up there and share it with you. And we're going to go ahead and get started here. Wait a minute, I got to finish this up. Sorry. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, like we've seen before, you know, how the uh, hydraulic system uh, lays out. And, and uh, in our first um, section, we start talking about how the hydraulics and the uh, brake drum and the brake disc system work. And this is just another picture of all the different components that are showed on the showing a front uh, disc brake system and a rear drum brake system on this particular one. They uh, well, some things that were added into it that we didn't talk about before is, of course, a brake light switch. If there's any kind of a, a, a pressure loss in one half of the actually brake system, then it would actually trigger the light and give you a warning on the dash. And there's also a proportioning valve on this particular one, and it, and also it could be a metering valve too. So this is kind of balance out the brake system is what we're trying to do. So we have that nice even stop instead of a diving or a dragging type stop going on. So here are the components of a brake drum system. And as you can see, there's an actual shoe and a shoe this has got the wearable, um, you know, you know, material that when it goes against a brake drum, it causes it to, you know, come to a slow stop. Now, there's some other linkage on here, and again, you will be talking about this in your brake classes, and the, uh, it's the adjusters. This is to actually help with adjusting the uh, little star uh, part of the brake system, so or. You know, you may even have for a parking brake. Uh, if it's a rear parking brake type system, it would actually pull this lever out and cause that to uh, kind of pull a little bit, and it caused the brake shoes to it kind of expand out and uh, lock itself up against the actual brake drum. Uh, the other retaining springs or kind of return springs, I should say, those are for. Uh, getting uh, the drum shoes back to uh, normal position after the actual uh, pe uh, the pedal is released and the brake fluid will actually come back and kind of give you that uh, that actual you know, you know able to move the vehicle again. So there's hold down springs for holding the brake to the backing plate here. This backing plate's where everything kind of bolts up to, and you'll have an axle coming out where the wheel will be attached. And you can actually see this as, uh, kind of a little ghost image of that. And uh, here's that backing plate I was talking about just a minute ago. So the shoes have to sit up on these uh, little uh, kind of shoe supports. Uh, you don't want it dragging right on the drum. You got the kind of you know, a little bit of a step up. It's nothing added into it. It's part of the backing plate itself. And then we have an anchor pin because if we just had them floating around and all that happened was the shoe would be going tumbling around. We need something to anchor it to stop it cause it to get to that stopping position. And here's showing kind of a little bit of a backing plate versus a drum groove. So that, you know, here's the drum, here's a little bit of a groove that we, that we get pretty close to. And here is showing a little bit of the anchor. So some actually use this type of spring. So not all brake systems use the same kind of springs as far as the drum systems go, and they do have different types of setups. So if you ever do get to work on one, you may have a different type of uh, spring setup. This one actually shows a return spring on the very bottom that brings them up, and they'll have another one up on the top, kind of hold the shoes in. So when it's applied, it overcomes uh, that pressure, comes overcomes the spring pressure, and it allows the uh, shoe to come out. And here's another type of an anchor and a different type of a, you know, a you know, kind of a, a backing plate where it's a little bit of a reinforced. 
And this is what it looks like in uh, the actual wheel cylinder. So this is that device that's pushing out on, that's taking the hydraulic pressure and pushing out on the actual uh, shoe to make contact to the drum. And they will be in different shapes. Some of them do not have this full link out. They'll actually have a blunt off link and the shoe will be made to actually sit on it. And this is how it actually bolts right up to. And this is really important right here. If uh, it will uh, kind of hold back the, uh, the actual uh, wheel cylinder from overextending itself and losing all of its fluid which unfortunately my 63 did not have. Here's showing some different types of shoes and the different types of, you know, kind of little webs part of it and how the uh, lining is attached. Some of the lining will be riveted on and some of the lining will actually be uh, almost uh, uh, glued on, but it's a very high temp type of a glue. And here's how they wedge and taper the lining so that they will match up the shoe, give good contact. And you'll have an actual material, friction material uh, labeling on it. And it tells uh, the uh, mechanic and the manufacturer what kind of material it is and what kind of uh, coefficient of friction it might have. So you'll see these different numbering systems in the formula of the material and also the uh, friction material. So this is all stamped on kind of on the side of the lining a lot of times. And here again shows a different uh, type of shoes. So we have the primary and the secondary lining. The uh, primary is gonna generally be the shorter one. Now you may have a set of shoes that are all the same size. It's just how the manufacturer of the vehicle actually um, puts it together. And the secondary usually is a longer shoe. And it comes really important when you get into your brake class to know the two of them because that's how they make their contacts. And usually the uh, secondary is gonna be on the rear side. Uh, and there's different types of high, you know, you know, position of the lining itself. So it, again, it uh, really depends on what kind of a, a setup you have. This is showing some kind of, uh, you know, where I was talking about the rivets earlier. This is how it actually riveted lining on. Uh, some um, prefer riveted versus what they call bonded lining. Uh, bonded lining, uh, depending on the manufacturer, it works really well. Uh, I've had a few bonded linings overheat and actually come loose. And but that's very infrequent that that actually happens. And all the typical, you know, kind of, you know, support systems, anchor pins, all these are put into place to keep the extra shoe on the backing plate and not kind of wiggle on out and when he applied the brake and stuff. Again, you'll be learning a lot more about this as you go on. This is a different type of, uh, you know, spring system that they have. And believe me, these are a bear to get lined up uh, correctly. Uh, when you're trying to do a brake job on them. It's, it's not a fun job to do. So this is kind of holds it down by this big spring right here, this a return spring. It will hold it together if you get it all set up right and kind of uh, the spring kind of falls down inside of it. Now this is another type of uh, a spring system that holds it in place. I just cut through that. And then here's some of the different uh, anchor pins for the actual uh, brake shoe. Uh, keeping it to the blacking plate. These are the most common uh, pins like this. And then they have like a spring or a kind of like a clip, or they could actually have this hook system. And uh, just a little bit about, you know, the linkage uh, in, you know, for actually getting a uh, brake, uh, um, uh, a parking brake. I keep on wanting to say emergency brake, but it's actually parking brake. And how you, know, you can see how the star assembly is set is every time you back up, it relieves a little bit of this uh, you know, kind of finger or this uh, little wedge and it allows it to turn the star a little bit to make sure it's, the brake system is always adjusted. This is what drums look like now. You'll notice this stamp down inside here. This is a Mackin diameter and this is in millimeters that you sometimes they have it stamped in inches also of how large, you know, what I mean by that, how much we can actually machine out of the inner part of this drum. 
after it gets over a certain amount, it could crack when it's um, been used or you know, it, the shoes may not make contact like they used to. So it's important that they have good uh, drums on your, uh, your brakes systems and that they're also within tolerance. And that's what we look at when we start doing a brake inspection. We're looking you know, how much uh, has the brake act, uh, drum actually been worn? And also we look for hot spots. So we're actually see if any kind of bluing is going on here that could show a sign that that brake system has been overheated. So it's just, uh, this is a kind of showing a good uh, a, a a picture of actually how the brake system is uh, energized. So as we apply, it's gonna put force out and then it's going to kind of lock down in a way it kind of turns and this is like the trailing shoe so when it's spinning okay then it kind of makes that force up against that anchor pin and allows it to actually wedge in there this is another uh picture showing you know kind of a double trailing type um uh, which again, you'll get into a lot of these different types of systems. And I just want to kind of point them out to you. And this is a, a usually, a, you know, this is a pretty good uh, picture of a, uh, a typical uh, dual servo type break. Uh, this is that adjusting star I was talking about and how that actually lays in. Uh, we used to do manually adjusting. This is a kind of go, you know, early on we had manually adjust uh, down here, you would go in, there's a little window on the back side, and we would actually manually adjust your brakes up. And it got to be a pretty good big skill. And usually you would have a four brake uh, drum system, and you would have to go and crank these in. And usually it was, you went down to contact, <coughs> and then you backed off so many uh, turns, and then you would go test drive it, and hopefully it didn't pull one way or another. So it was a very much of a great balancing act when you did that. Uh, here is actually showing again, uh, kind of the you know, application of a dual servo and you'll notice how it kind of locks into place. And here's a good picture also with the star and how this actually adjusts uh, automatically. So when you back up, it actually lifts that little finger and it rocks it down if there's enough space into that drum and uh, I should say clearance between the drum and actually the shoe. And here's a different system, same kind of principle, but just a different way of doing it. And here's another one, uh, how they actually run the links up on this particular one. All pretty much the same, um, you know, kind of uh, outcome is just how they run the linkage systems up. And here is showing how this particular one works. So as we're kind of uh, reversing, I apply the brakes and it pulls up and allows it to turn one of the actual uh, a star wheel, uh, kind of a little bit of the star wheel. And you can continue to do that. So uh, to keep that pedal up, that's the main thing. We wanted to make sure that pedal was up. Good, good clearance. And there's another one right there, folks. And some of these get pretty complicated when you start trying to balance all the springs and all together. So this is one of the downsides of uh, brake drum systems. And another one here also. And this one is uh, kind of the, I, I would say a, a, a spacer, you might say, that actually helps with an actual uh, brake, uh, what they call a brake strut. It has to do with the parking brake to make sure you can get a good applied parking brake and let it instead of let it relax so much. So this is uh, the kind of the last slide I wanted to kind of talk about. And uh, this is just an overview of brake systems. Like I said um, many, many times that you will get more involved in this when you start going into your um, classes on your brake classes. They really kind of break it apart show you the different systems, let you look at it, let you inspect it, and actually do some repairs on it too. So I hope this was informational for you. Just remember always that uh, if you need to contact me, go through the inbox. Uh, that way uh, myself and Mr. Gasway can respond to you. Um, and also go to um, 
the, uh, the student lounge and uh, post some of your questions that might be general for the whole class that might somebody in the classroom one of your classmates might know uh, the answer to the question. All right, so take care of yourselves and we will be seeing you soon on the next segment.